Germany to Europe, start turning it into the fastest house on wheels, and risk it all when I catch the whole thing on fire, TIG welding. Previously on Six Wheel Garage. Version 0.5 of the Lambo build out is going in the dumpster. So after doing the wooden build out proof of concept and talking to professional overlanders at the Overland Show, it has become abundant that the wooden platform in the back of the Camper Genie is not going to stay. The screws would back out over the washboarded roads of Kazakhstan and the wood look is just too dull for a Lamborghini. I need something fancy, something nice, something aluminum. Here we are in the Urus and it is so freaking hot in here that the DJI camera, which hasn't even been running, keeps shutting off and not recording. So I don't know if you guys are gonna get this. It's like 120 probably degrees in this car. Now what I wanna to try to do is to pop down this headliner so that we can see up the wires that are up there. As you can see up in here, there are the wires for the antenna on the roof. This is where I'm gonna to try to bring the Starlink power and the solar power and the Starlink data down into the car. All right, so as you guys saw, I just popped down that headliner over there and was able to see in a little bit, but not all the way down to where the antenna is where I wanna bring the wires into the vehicle. So I bent this part down here. This is aluminum. I think I've permanently bent this. It doesn't appear that I've creased it, so it should be able to hopefully go back. This video is brought to you by smash that subscribe button. And when you're done with that, slay, I mean slay, the like button. But I can see the wires up in there and I'm hoping that I can be able to chase them down here. I still need to get some sort of mirror or something kind of shoved up in there to see how that antenna is screwed down. I might be able to get a schematic. I will go ahead and pull this panel off here hoping that there's some goodies under here as far as space is concerned. Let's come out. Okay, it's all, everything I've seen so far is all of these metal clips, which is really great because those easily snap right back into place. It's like all the space that's covered up. What is this? Look, there's my hand. Whee! Easily get the wires to go in through there out and around, that shouldn't be a big deal. And the nice thing about videoing all this is that we'll have a record for it later if I forget parts or locations. I think normally when people pull a Lamborghini apart, unless they're stealing it, they're probably not in the driveway getting shed on by birds and picked away by flies on a crazy hot day. But hey, this is the six wheel garage been in worse places. So there's not any like dead space that we can steal back from the car that I see. Just hard to pop up. See here are all the fuses and things with a little pocket to be reachable in case we need to change out a fuse or a relay. You can see the antenna up here like this roof is wobbling. Like this thing almost looks like it wants to just come up probably a screw in there that we need to figure out. There's a big screw in there, but it looks way more than just holding a headliner screw. And again, the last thing we want is to bend this headliner all up, but we're going down the road and it keeps popping out of the clips. And... Okay, like everything in the build, I have decided to change my mind because we're so last minute and up against the time crunch. So. I'm gonna put this all back together, I'm gonna to put this all back together, and we're gonna focus on getting the batteries and all of this equipment hooked up and getting this whole platform made. And I've just ordered quickly on Amazon two more of these suction cups. So we'll just mount the Starlink on the roof and we can run some wires down either through the sunroof and just let it come through the rubber or here through the trunk, probably the sunroof, and then we just don't have to open it again. And when we get over to Europe, then we'll go ahead and we'll get the Lamborghini bars added from the Italian factory. So we actually have the Lamborghini bars, then we have the whole roof rack, 
type of systems that we can play with for this car that are factory systems. Because the steel guys, the aluminum guys close in about an hour and a half, and we had to go pick up all the aluminum so that we have it to TIG weld it tomorrow. And, yeah. So, I'm gonna pop this thing back together as quick as I can, and then we'll get this thing cleaned up, hook up the trailer, get on the road, and let's go pick up some aluminum. <laughs> got some cool stuff, look at that plate over there. Look at that thick, look at that four inch thick aluminum plate. Five inch thick plate, good God. Look at that plate, look at how thick that is. That's like a six by six inch aluminum. That's like a nine inch round solid chunk of aluminum. Oh my God. Anyway, this place is called Alrico Aluminium. And it's in this guy's like back of his farmhouse. It's really cool. Uh, I just need two like two footers. It was about $1,100. Of course, we got there late and the owner had left, so they couldn't even figure out the total because I wanted to add a couple scrap pieces of steel, one for the plate under the fridge, and then I wanted another scrap to add for just like holding the battery tray in and I don't know, whatever else I might want to have some scraps for. Now, we also had the stainless steel guy just drop off the parts for the stainless steel water tank and he made it all out of eighth inch stainless steel. And I think that was a big mistake. It is way, way thick. And that thing will hold about 11 and a half gallons. And it was about $600 for that little bit of stainless steel. So 1100 for the aluminum, 600 for the stainless steel water tank. And we still got to weld it all and put it all together. And I'm still a little concerned that that water tank is going to be too heavy because that stainless steel is just really freaking heavy. I decided to go overkill on all of the aluminum. I just wanted to make 100% sure that everything was going to be strong enough and we weren't going to have any cracking or breaking of the aluminum. I mean, I'm not 100%, obviously, aluminum can be a brittle thing. But I wanted to be sure that we weren't going to have any bending and cracking. I thought about doing it out of SAE, American style, you know, quarter 20 type thread count screws, and I thought about what is the access to my parts worldwide. I think we should do everything in metric. And worldwide, you cannot really get American thread sizes. It's metric everywhere you go. And in America, with some searching, you can find the metric. So I decided that the best way to do this build out was going to be with metric fasteners. So the entire build out is metric all the way. So anywhere in the world, I can find screws and parts for the build out and for the car, because the car is metric too. All right, we got some new toys here. We got the Starlink, look at that. And it looks like, I think this is the Luna fridge all the way from South Africa. And we're gonna go return it to South Africa, but in the Lambo. Hello, can you hear me now? Elon. So we've got here a box that appears to be inside a box that appears to be inside another box. Looks pretty sweet. It's got its baskets. You can latch this thing down with these latches. That lid's not coming off. All right, look, we also got some drawer slides. That is a freaking heavy duty drawer slide. Look at that standout on that thing right there. That's solid. That thing is not going anywhere. The reason I ordered these Accurite slides is because everyone at the Overland show had literally 
built their entire drawer custom systems from the Accuride slides and then put their own steel brackets around them. Which is great and all for a standard rig, I guess. But I want aluminium, the carbon fiber or titanium, you know, something that's strong and lightweight. Right then, let's see if it fits all the way from South Africa. If we put it in here, are we going to be able to clear? Now, obviously, right now it looks like it clears, but we gotta bring it up so it's gonna clear this tailgate with some sort of drawer slide setup. So as you guys can see, it's gonna be really tight. I'm gonna to have to modify that platform that I made, scoot it over a little bit in order for this thing to have room. Additionally, the seat's gonna to have to be down to fit the water tank on the back side of the cooler. But looking at the front side of the cooler, there just might be enough room to squeeze this little water tank in there. I don't know, we'll have to see. All right guys, we got the first box here from Battleborn Batteries. Let's open it up and check it out. It's already broken there. What kind of goodies in here? We got the DC-DC charger. We got the solar smart charge. The smart shunt. All right, we've just got here a new toy for the Lamborghini. Come check it out. Now, we have partnered up with Star Mount exclusively for bringing internet on the roof of this Lamborghini Urus. This is going to be badass. We're gonna unbox this, we're gonna cut open the Starlink, and we're gonna show you guys just exactly how to mount the Starlink in the Star Mount, and then we're gonna drill some holes in the roof of this Lamborghini and show you how we can mount it on the roof. Check it out. We've got our star mount, we've got the router, then we've got the goods. Look at this polycarbonate sheet. Why do we have a transformer? I wonder if we can program this router to let us turn the wireless off and just go with the ethernet at times. All right, there we have it. We got all of the batteries in, fit in. Now it's ready to ship the car. Oh wait. As an experiment, about a week and a half ago, I went ahead and unplugged the subwoofer. So I've been driving around without the subwoofer and haven't noticed any negligible difference by not having that additional sound. There's plenty enough sound coming from all these speakers. I had the subwoofer turned all the way down anyway, so I noticed no difference. So we're gonna pop that out. Then we can see if we can fit all three batteries from Battleborn, or soon to be partner, right over here. Maybe we fit all the controls in here, and maybe we might even have room for some additional storage. Okay, rod across two and a half inch by inch and a half inch, two and a half inch by inch and a half inch. Then we have an angle iron that we need to at least come up. On this side, it probably just needs like a piece of four by four angle iron, probably at least three sixteenths wall. Four by four angle iron, at least three sixteenths wall. Then over here, we need a at least a four by five inch vertical angle iron, at least three sixteenths. And on the outside of that, we'll do a drawer slide with the vertical piece of aluminum. And on the inside, we'll have the inside drawer slide and then the drawer.
without you, Minion. With a circular saw. With a wood blade. Okay, looks like it fits pretty well in here. That is my super cozy, cozy sleep platform. Aluminium. God, do I love plywood. I love wood. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, sixwheelgarage.com. That's right, sixwheelgarage.com, where you can go and get exclusive merch. I've got new merch dropping all the time. Hats, bandanas, sweatshirts, t-shirts, pants, shorts, Maybe we're gonna put shoes. Maybe we're gonna have mugs. Maybe we're even gonna have band-aids of different sizes for your car, for your bumper in emergency situations. Maybe we'll even have band-aids for your fingers, for your brain, screws, bolts for when the screws are loose in your head. You don't know. Everything could be available soon. Sixwheelgarage.com. That is the number six wheel garage.com. That is the sponsor of this video. Great, awesome, exclusive merch coming out soon. And if you want to know more about it and be entered to win in certain raffles and giveaways that we have of merch, go to Instagram and TikTok, where we also post daily stories exclusive that aren't on any other platforms. Thanks for watching Six Wheel Garage. Because this aluminum, metal in general, just sucks to work with. Wood, you just can carve it, you can curve it. I mean, you can carve metal, but it just, carving wood is more of an art. Carving metal is just grunt dirtiness. So anyone out there that works with metal, you are a good person. Someone else doesn't want to do that. That someone else is me. But yet, I do it. Because I know that this will be the strongest path along the journey. And we can go bah, 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 bounce down a bunch of roads, and the metal probably won't come apart. And we can thread into it, and it's stronger, and it's gonna hold things, and it'll stay in place. and. It's not going to bend and we're not going to have screws backing out and have to put wood putty in there and blah, 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 blah. So that's why we're using aluminium, as you can see. Let's get back to work. All right, we are working on the Lamborghini build, turning the Lambo into a camper. And I just ordered this package about eight hours ago. And look at that, we got some battery cables. These are two odd cables. We could have found them locally and we would have had to make the connections, crimp them, solder them, heat shrink tube, cut them, whatever. But these things factory delivered so we can get them installed quickly and get on the road with those Battleborn batteries that we got going in the Lamborghini. All right, so we've been waiting for the drawer slides for the bed, and I see a FedEx truck over yonder. Maybe, is it for us? I don't know. Let's see. It looks like he's coming, yeah. All righty, appreciate it. Totally dead. Okay. It's a five thousand dollar battery. Okay. When I say car on, means car on. Do you know what car on means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not accessory. On means you put your foot yeah, on the brake, yeah, yeah. you turn it on. On any of these things, I appreciate your help, but you gotta communicate if you don't understand something. One hundred percent. Yeah, I I told you about you were in your things and you weren't like listen to me. So guys, guess what? Senor camera killed the battery on the Lambo. So luckily we've got our Battleborn batteries to jump start it. Okay, try to start the engine. Okay, and that is again how we use our jumper cable Romex wires to get the car started. After Senor camera killed it. He tried to kill it, he doesn't like Lamborghini. He's a Ferrari fan. That's what happened. Mike, can I help you? Yeah, I was wondering, do you guys do shipping by boat or by plane for cars? We do ocean only. 
what port are you going out of? All of them. All of them. So to go from like Charleston to uh, Rotterdam, what would that cost? About $1,200, depending on the size of the car. 1200 And what sort of time frame does it take to get there? About a month. And what about insurance? Insurance is optional. If you want it, we charge 1.5% of the value of the car. Do you guys move a lot of cars? That's what we do, day in, day out. Got it. Uh, I'm extremely busy. I have like five urgent things I need to do in the next five minutes. Okay. Sorry I'll let you that. run. No worries. <clears throat> what a fucker. Hello, this is Monica. Can I help you? Yeah, I was wondering, do you guys do uh, shipping by container and, and air? Yes, we do. And what is the price difference from container versus air? It depends what you're shipping and where you're shipping it to. I've got a, an SUV. It's a Lamborghini Urus. Mm -hmm. I'm going all over Europe. And where in Europe do you want to ship it to? Anywhere. Okay. So by ocean from Richmond to Rotterdam is eighteen hundred dollars, and by plane it's probably going to be about like twenty thousand. And what about the insurance? Insurance will be two percent of the value of the vehicle. Huh. And how long does that take? Approximately seven to eight weeks. And how long does it take by plane? About two weeks. I, I've been calling around, and some people have told me that I need to drain all of the fluid out of the vehicle. I'm not sure why, why they, would, they, they would tell you that, but I will need to look into it and then send you the instructions whether we send it by boat or by, or by air. Got it, okay. So you don't really know the, the procedure on those? Not without looking at the car, not without knowing what type of car we're shipping. Okay, all right. well let me Thank ponder you. it. Thank you. What the fuck? What do you mean what type of car? I just told you what type of car. Mercury Auto Transport, how can I help you? Yeah, I was calling to see if you guys facilitate shipping of cars from the U.S. to Europe. No, we do not. You don't? No, we don't. Sorry. And do you know anything about Did automobile insurance once over in Europe? Uh, no. Absolutely no. No. All right, I'll check it out. Thanks okay. so much. Okay, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling Schumacher Cargo. How many your call? Yeah, I was looking to talk to someone about cargo shipping for a vehicle to Europe. What country in Europe are you shipping your vehicle to? <clears throat> I just need to get it to Europe, so I'm not. I'm doing a road trip all over Europe. If she's gonna transfer me, what the hell does she care where I'm going in Europe? Good afternoon. This is Christian. How can I help you? You guys do shipping by cargo ship or by plane, or what's your predominant? Oh, we do both. It comes down to your pocketbook. So for the cargo ship, what are we looking at cost-wise to get it from the U.S. over to Europe? And what ports would okay. it go? Can you be more specific? The U.S. is pretty big. <clears throat> Europe is pretty big. How about, why don't we do this? Let's rewind. Where are you going? I'm just trying to get it to Europe. I can pick it up in any port in Europe. Yeah, and where are you located in the U.S.? Montana. Montana. Okay, so you would either bring the car down to California or New York. Do you want your own container or do you want to share a container? What's the cost difference? A couple thousand bucks. So uh, 5K should cover it New York to Germany. And then what about insurance? Uh, insurance is 2% of the value of the vehicle with the $1,000 deductible. And then do you know anything as far as getting insurance for the vehicle once it's in Europe for like driving on the roads? No, all we do is we're just shippers, not insurance carriers. Right. We have to look into that too. Do you have any contacts in that front? No, sir. And what's the typical time going to be for the um, shipping? About eight weeks. So the eight weeks is for if I had my own container. That's what we were discussing because you said you wanted your own container with your car and your rims. And then what sort of logistic network do you guys have once it's in Europe if I need to get it down into either the Middle East or into Africa as well? We don't do that. You only go out of the U.S.? Only out of the U.S. I know I can bring it back to the U.S., but all we do is U.S., Europe, and back to the U.S. Uh, plane is about, um, uh, uh, about a month, three weeks to a month, depending on U.S. customs. Okay. And then whether it goes on container or plane, I mean, do you guys help with getting the, like a carnet de passage? Nope. That's, that's, uh, you're, you're the vehicle owner, you have to get that. Alrighty. Well, let me ponder this and I will reach back out. Thank you for your time. 
Oh, no worries. Wonderful. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Alrighty. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Bye. 45 for a plane. That's crazy. But five for the boat and then another 2% for vehicle value. So we're looking at 10,000 and then you gotta wait two months. And why is the plane so slow? A month for a plane? Plane goes this like same day, I don't understand. stick out these hinges. So if it weren't for those hinges, it wouldn't rub. You know why? Because I measured it so precisely, I measured it to this. I was trying to figure it out and I just didn't have that extra quarter in. It's like decently sturdy. I've only got four screws in right now. It doesn't seem any more sturdy than that wooden platform I had temporarily rigged up. fits up in here this time. So, as you can see, we now have about a quarter inch over there. Now when we close it, we've got about an eighth inch, a little more up there up top. And again, not a big deal to have that gap right here because, for no apparent reason, go ahead and do that. So there we go. You see that up there? we got plenty of space. Got it set at 110 at 10 amps. I just Googled it. it. Says on the phone 125 amps for eighth inch aluminum. But I don't want to burn a hole through this back of this drawer, so we're gonna start with 110, see what it does. And the only experience I had on a TIG welder was about 10 or 15 minutes tops at a TIG welding steel party for welding a few plates together. So I had absolutely no clue other than some research online and a little bit of YouTube videos on how to do it. Things were spattering and spudding and the heat temperature wasn't right. So I decided to watch a few YouTube videos to see if I could master the art. And after taking an account for everything stated in the YouTube videos, I could absolutely not figure out either how to get the adjustments or how to get myself to know how to weld aluminum. So I found and devised a strategy whereby I could just melt the corners of the aluminum together with enough heat that it would melt together without having to add any sort of flux or core, you know, wire to the situation. I was able to build the whole thing by just melting aluminum together. And where I needed a little bit of extra flux, I just melted in chunks of scrap aluminum, which is absolutely ridiculous, but it ended up working out. Okay, so I'm cheating and not using the filler rod and just melting the edge but I wanted to do a test to make sure that's actually strong and obviously in one side I've like melted it all the way through but on the other side it hasn't I think the melting it through method ow it's hot it's gonna be fine for our application we can keep doing the melting the edge method with no filler rod until it comes to the bed platform where I've got to melt that corner. And I don't know how to do corners, I can't figure it out. So that'll be fun.
a garage, I figure out how to put my Lamborghini on an airplane and ship it to Europe and continue turning it into the fastest house on wheels, albeit a burnt one. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button down below and the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I post new videos and tell your friends about us, I really appreciate it. Spread the word, spread the love, hit a comment down below and if you want to support the channel, go to sixwheelgarage.com, that's the number six wheel, garage.com, check it out, get in line for exclusive awesome merch that's dropping soon. And if you want to be first to see all of the new content as it unfolds. I post daily stories on Instagram and TikTok, not seen anywhere else where you can see exactly where I am at in the world and what's going on with the homeless life camping in the back of a Lamborghini. Next week on Six Wheel... <clears throat> next week... Next time on Six Wheel Garage, I figure... And I get a little carried away when the whole thing catches fire. What was the word I was going to use? In today's video, I figured out five ways how not to ship a Lamborghini to Europe, turn my Uranus into a badass Uranus. Go again. I don't think Alejandro could use that. I think he can. No. Alejandro, you can't use it. Alejandro, you can use it. Ha 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 ha!